Hey guys, welcome back to the BMW Blog YouTube channel and welcome to a new test drive. I'm actually behind the wheel of a 2023 BMW 7 Series and I'm going for a drive from Chicago to Missouri and back to Chicago. This is actually the return trip, so I've already had a chance to drive the car quite a bit. So now I can share with you my impressions on this new luxury limousine from BMW. So let's start with the engine and the model type that I'm driving today. So this is the 2023 BMW 760i xDrive. So clearly an all-wheel drive limousine and it comes with a V8 engine. And why is that important? Because this is the only model of the 7 Series that comes with the V8 engine and it is not offered in Europe. It's offered in the US though and this is why I'm driving the car today. 4.4 liter V8 twin turbo and this is the new S68 engine. If that name might sound familiar is because you've seen it in other BMW products like the new BMW XM for example and you will see the very same power plant in the upcoming BMW M5 next year. So clearly it is a quite reliable engine that's going to be used across the entire lineup of new BMW products especially the high-end ones. Power output 536 horsepower and 553 pounds-feet of torque and that's enough to take this car from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.1 seconds. That number might not be impressive because other BMWs can go a lot faster but this is a 5,000 pounds limousine and it's about 18 feet long so this is a very very big car this is why the power delivery it is quite impressive the XM does feel a little bit different with the S68 because it uses a plug-in hybrid setup but in this car it's only the V8 engine therefore the power delivery has been adjusted to cope with the size and the heaviness of the new 7 series so i'm going to talk about that also on straight roads driving normally like every other person and also when i'm going to push the car on some of the corners but before that let's talk about the 7 series overall so this is clearly the pinnacle of the bmw luxury class you have there also the 8 series and the x7 but the 7 Series has always been the flagship BMW and that's never going to change probably. It competes in a very, very competitive segment clearly with the Mercedes S-Class and of course with the EQS if you were to compare the i7 to that car. You also have products from Audi and other brands that will compete for the same customer base. But overall it's always been about the Mercedes S-Class versus the BMW 7 Series. And that's also important to mention because I feel like for the first time BMW is closing the gap against the S-Class that's always been the benchmark in the segment and with this new generation 7 series I feel like we're getting closer to the S-Class. So when it comes to the driving experience it does feel a lot closer to an S-Class than let's say to an M product. If in the past BMW focused quite a bit on the ultimate driving experience and the feeling that you're getting behind the wheel versus the luxury that you're getting from the car i feel like with the new generation g77 series that has changed quite a bit because right now the 7 series is more comfortable than ever and especially you will experience that as you go on very long road trips where the car will really shine because it was meant to be a very luxurious limousine that's not meant to be a driving dynamic car but rather one they can take it from point a to point b in style and luxury so let's start with some of the technical updates that were done to the new 7 series because there are quite a few and that starts with the rear wheel steering of course you've heard about that system before it's one that actually helps quite a bit to maneuver the car in tight city spaces so if you travel at low speeds that will bring some agility to the car especially if you're going into a busy city like chicago but if you drive on the highway or if you're driving at super high speeds and trying to corner and trying to go quite quite fast then that system will actually help the rear end to stay in check and at the same time to make the car feel a little bit more nimble and a lot faster than it should despite its weight. So that's one update down to the car that makes a huge difference in this particular size. But you also have the air suspension. So it's a luxury car, so you have to have that air suspension, which works quite, quite well. 
if you drive this car in a city like Chicago where there are a lot of potholes, I promise you that you will absolutely enjoy the air suspension compared to the steel suspension that you might have in an M car because it does flatten out the surfaces quite a bit. It's extremely, extremely smooth. And even if when you travel on the highway, you can feel the car just kind of floating slowly, absorbing the shocks in the road. And that's what makes the ride really calm and very serene in many, many ways. Another interesting tidbit in the new 7 Series, it's the 40 volt active anti-roll bar setup. And it's one thing that you've seen in other BMWs as well. And of course, now it's made its way into the 7 Series. It has a lot of properties and of course the main one is really it helps with the air suspension being a lot more floaty than in the past and as I said earlier it does make the car feel a lot more comfortable on the road even when you travel on uneven surfaces. Dimension wise once again I said it's 18 feet long but it's also wider at the front and in the back than the outgoing generation 7 series and that makes a difference, especially when you try to corner the car. So if you find yourself on some of those curvy roads in Missouri, for example, and if you push the car quite, quite hard, you will realize how grippy that front end really is. I mean, this is a heavy car with a very heavy nose. You have a really big engine on the front, yet at the same time, being so much wider with really big wheels. I mean, you can go up to 21 inch wheels on this one, thanks to the M Sport package. You will feel that front end being really grippy. It cuts the corners really nicely and it allows you to travel at speeds that you wouldn't expect to do in a car like the 7 Series. Of course, the wider track in the back does the same thing. It does have the extra system, but if you wanna spin that tail a little bit, I promise you that you will be able to do with this car as well. Especially, once again, if you find some of those nice bands where you can push that rear end, it will step out a little bit on you, but then the X-Drive system kicks in and all the nannies and it will actually keep you in check and you can have some fun with the car as well. This guy trailing me now. Did he really flash the lights on me? Yeah. yeah. No, I was going 70. I was filming, doing a review of the oh, car. Okay. Yeah. Head back there? Heading back. Where are you coming from? Lake of the Ozarks. Oh, man. Party Central. Uh, oh, yeah. How you like the car? Love the car. I wish it was mine, but it's not. How these things run? Uh, 162. How much? 162. Oh my God. Uh, I'm not gonna write you tickets. If appreciate you want, it. Just come back, stand up a passenger side window. I'm gonna roll my window down. I gotta run you. And I gotta do a car okay, for stopping cool. you. Okay, cool. So you want me to get out? You can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So as you might have seen, got pulled over by the police. There was no speeding involved, that's the funny part. And the uh, explanation that I got was that I had something hanging off or on my window, which is the GoPro camera right there. And it's funny because I usually have about three of them because it apparently blocks your view if you're looking for things in the side mirrors and all of that. So nonetheless, police stopped me, no ticket, of course. I guess he was more interested to find out more about the car and how much it costs and all of that. So that was cool, but um, let's keep going. All right, so let's continue talking about the driving experience. So once again, if you push the car hard, you will have some fun with this one. It is extremely capable. Of course, it's using the ZF eight speed automatic transmission, which you know from any other BMWs you might've seen in the past. It is very, very precise, very smooth. And I've always said this, it seems to work quite, quite well with a V8 engine, and especially with that very linear power delivery. And once again, it is extremely, extremely good and it is highly recommended, even in a car where you have the option of a six-speed manual. Braking, heavy car, 5,000 pounds once again, but because it does come with upgraded brakes, the M Sport package brings that to the car. Then of course, you won't notice a lot of fade on the brakes, even if you constantly push the car and stop and go all the time. Speaking of spending a lot of money on the car, base price about $113,000 on this one but with all the options in this car comes in at about $162,000 and let me show you why we're gonna step out of the car and now I'm gonna show you the design of the car and we're gonna talk about some of those options that add up to the final price all right so let's talk about the design of the BMW 7 series because it has been quite controversial and that starts with a very massive front end as you can see this very large kinney grille that's one design element that a lot of people complain about 
of course seen here is the M Sport Pro package so what does it do to the car it actually adds some blacked out elements which essentially tries to hide this massive kidney grill but of course that's not the only thing that was changed on the new 7 series compared to the previous generation we have now split headlights as you can see daytime running lights on top then you have a pair of headlamps on the bottom right there so of course this design choice has been quite controversial so why has BMW done this? Well, they wanted to add some flair to the new 7 Series and at the same time, they wanted to align this car with the luxury class, which is the X7 as well. And as you've seen on that car, that one has split headlights as well. Now let's talk about the M Sport Pro package because this is a quite unique offering on the 7 Series. I've talked already about the Kini grille being all blacked out, but of course you have this piano black painted elements on the bottom of course it gives the car a more aggressive more dynamic look especially when you look at the car from the front you can see how massive and how bold it looks like once again design is very very subjective so it's one of those things that you either love it or hate it and it cannot be more true than with the new 7 series so once again let's kind of like walk around and show you a little bit how bold the front end looks like of course, because of the M Sport Pro package, you're also getting 21 inch wheels. You can see them right there. Additionally, you have the option to pick your own brake calipers in different colors. Black right here, but there is an option in red and blue as well. Now let's kind of move to the side and let's talk about the design a little bit more. Once again, this is a long wheel base. BMW only offers one version in this new generation. And as you can see right here, it is quite, quite long. I believe it measures about 18 feet in length. A few cool features on the car, of course, you have this two-tone paint job, eventually in red right there, black sapphire on top. Of course, it gives the car more of a Rolls-Royce look. And because of this paint job, you have to pay an additional $12,000. So it is not a cheap option, but if you can afford it, I absolutely recommend it on the new 7 Series. Flush door handles right here. You can see you have a couple of ways to open the door, either by the door handle right there, or you can just push that and the door will open. Of course, if somebody's on the way, it will wait till it goes around the object and then it will open up. So let me close it up. So let's walk towards the back. Let's talk about the rear end as well. Of course, typical to BMW design, you have this L-shaped taillights. You can see them right there very massive they wrap around the rear end of the car it's an x drive of course we're going to talk about that as we drive the car today quad tailpipes this is the only 7 series that comes with that because it's the only one that's been offered with a v8 engine you can also see this very solid spoiler right there because you're having the m sport pro package you're also getting this design element and if you go back and you see the car from behind, you can see how wide it really is. It is truly a massive car. And especially once you sit inside, you realize how much space you have with this one. Speaking of space, I'm gonna open the trunk. You can see we're going on a road trip today. That was the idea of this test drive. And we have quite a few bags in there and it's quite, quite spacious. And we have another surprise here that we can talk about it in a second, but let's leave that for last. So let me close it out. And now we're going to take a look inside and we're going to talk about the design a lot more in there because this car, it is extremely unique when it comes to the interior design. It is packed with technology and of course with a bunch of luxury items. So let's hop in. All right, so let's talk about the design of the new 7 Series. But first, let me show you how you close the door in the car. You can simply press the brake pedal and the door will close. Of course, you have another option. You can either use this button right there on the interaction bar or you can also just simply grab the handle and pull the door so let's talk about the design a little bit first of all you can see right here you have this really massive curved display we've talked about this in the past no surprise there is the same one used in several other bmws and it makes a difference because first of all you are losing the physical buttons and switches in the car as you can see it's really clean here and you don't have access to the climate control for example it has to be operated through the touch screen once again i've talked about this so many times before it takes time to get used to it it is not ideal but unfortunately it is what it is today and you don't have any other option on the bright side the design looks a lot cleaner inside as you can see right here this integration of the vents 
with the interaction bar. It's really, really cool. Very minimalistic, really nicely done. So that's kind of the trade-off of losing the climate control switches and buttons, of course. I drive eight, of course, if you have a production build i believe starting july 2023 you are going to be able to get an upgrade to 8.5 you've seen our demo on that system as well you're getting a brand new ui and that's going to improve also the ac controls on the screen because right now it is not extremely intuitive and it takes a little bit of time to get used to this steering wheel m sport steering wheel of course because you are getting that m sport package i love the flat bottom design and this is one i've talked about this in the past as well what i've said that i would love to see this one in other bmws as well center console once again very very clean i'm just happy to still see the iDrive controller in the car of course you have these glass controls swarovski crystal right there looks really really cool and very very premium of course it's a luxury car so you're getting things like two cup holders in there that you can use to either cold or heat up your drinks you have this really cool carbon fiber trim on the dashboard of course you can spec the car with different trim options so nothing that you shouldn't expect to see in a bmw 7 series speaking of options you have in this car the cashmere and vegan leather option I've mentioned it before, I'm gonna say it one more time. I actually truly love this option because it looks very premium, it feels great, and it's something different that we have not seen before. Of course, if you prefer leather, BMW offers plenty, plenty of leather options when it comes to the new 7 Series. This car is fully loaded, it's a press car, so of course BMW wanted to put everything inside this car, all the options possible, and that means you're also getting that Bowers & Wilkins audio system right there. It sounds fantastic and it makes a difference, especially when you pair it with a BMW theater screen. And we're gonna talk about that next once we go in the back seat. Other than that, it's really your typical luxury BMW. It has everything you need to make your drive very comfortable. And that was the idea of this test this week. We actually drove from Chicago all the way to Missouri and we had a chance to put the car through its paces and see how it does as a road trip companion, for example. But before we talk about the driving experience, let's go in the back seat and let me show you a lot more features in there because it's actually one of my favorite spots in the car. Let's go take a look. Let me close the door. You can see you can do it by simply pushing on that button right there. And immediately you will see how much space I have. So the front driver's seat was set to my height. I'm 6'2", 6'3", somewhere around that. And you can see how much space I have in this car. Once again, about 18 feet long. It's a long wheelbase 7 Series, the only option offered today. But let's talk about the tech a little bit more. So, first off, you get two tablets on both doors, 5.5 inches. And you can see right there that you have a lot of options to control the seats, the climate controls, and my favorite features in the car. Right there, the theater screen. So this is an 8K 31-inch screen. It's available as an option in all the 7 Series and i7 models. Of course, it is pricey, but I believe it is absolutely worth it if you're getting a 7 Series. If you have a 5G connection set up in your car, you can stream your favorite shows through Netflix, of course, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, and a lot more. Unfortunately, this one, it's not connected right now, so we can't really play anything, but I've had a chance to use it before, and it's absolutely fantastic. One thing you might have noticed, when I pushed that theater mode, immediately the screen came down and also the blinds went up in the back, one for privacy and two because you want it to be more cozy in here and be able to see the screen in its full glory. I'm gonna show you a few things on the screen. If you go to settings, you have a bunch of applications that come standard. And then of course you can install a lot more. These are all just the standard ones that are inside the car. You can do things like this, you can go back to the menu, you can go on this side, and you can even adjust the format of the video from 16 by 9 to 21 by 9 to 32 by 9. You can go back and you can shift the content from one side to another. Of course, you can have different inputs, and you can go from an HDMI to Amazon Fire TV. So once again, that's the theater screen available as an option. It's because once again, it's a fully loaded car. You're also getting the executive lounge on this side. 
you can just push a single button, the front seat will fold up and then you will have an executive launch position. In this one, everything comes up and you can just relax and sit there and enjoy the drive. And we're gonna test this today to see what it feels like when you're riding in the back of the 7 Series because maybe a lot of customers would prefer to do that versus driving their own car. So let's hop back behind the steering wheel and continue our drive with the new BMW 760i and we'll tell you more about how it drives. Since I mentioned the quietness maybe of a Rolls-Royce, I'm also curious if this car has any lessons learned embedded into the suspension that came maybe from Rolls-Royce because it does feel extremely plush on the road and it kind of reminds me of the magic carpet that you would get, for example, in a Rolls-Royce Ghost. Of course, that car is a little bit heavier and a lot more luxurious, but I do wonder if they've used some of the technology from that car into this one because it does feel in many ways closer to a Rolls-Royce than ever before. And that's a good thing because when a car like the 7 Series, you don't want to have a very rough ride. You want to make sure that you're floating over the road, as I mentioned earlier, because your passengers will thank you for that. You're not in this car trying to beat any numbering records. You're in this car trying to enjoy a very serene and very calm ride. So, speaking of driving, once again, very uneventful when you drive at low speeds or even high speeds on the highway, but you can take advantage of the latest driving assistance features in the car. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the upgraded level 2 plus system in this one, so you still have to put your hands on the steering wheel every 30 seconds in order to have that kind of self-driving experience. But it is still quite, quite good because you can relax maybe for 30 seconds at a time. You can even maybe apply this trick where you're touching the steering wheel with your leg and that's gonna give you a little bit more time to relax before taking over the steering wheel. Of course, it does have the lane departure warnings, clearly. It's nothing new in a BMW. And of course, you can also control the distance in between you and the other cars. You will brake for you and you will alert you if there is a danger coming up. It's a fully loaded car, so it comes with a 360 degree camera. It comes with cool features inside, like a drive recorder. You can also take some selfies inside a car. You can record 30 seconds before and after an incident, for example. So that could be quite, quite useful if you get into a car crash. Naturally, there are some people that maybe want to get some extra sportiness out of their 7 Series, and they can do that because it does come with a sport mode. And if you flip the car into that mode, you will get a stiffer steering wheel, also a stiffer suspension, and you can also feel a tiny boost coming to the engine. Speaking of the boost, there is also a boost lever on the left side here. If you hold that down, you will get about 10 seconds of additional power. And of course, it comes with that enhanced sound from the engine. So once again, if you do want to get a sportier 7 Series, maybe something that will put a smile on your face if you want to go fast, if you want to corner hard, then you can certainly use that sport mode. If you want to go into more relaxed mode, there is an option in the iDrive system as well. You can just flip into that mode and everything kind of calms down. You're getting the massaging feature in the seats. All the blinds come up and it just becomes a more calm ride inside the car and outside as well. You might have heard the sound from the V8 engine. Of course, it is artificial in many ways because you are getting the active sound, the fake sound being pumped through the spinkers. Uh, that's nothing new. Once again, you've seen it in other BMWs as well. But if you're on the outside and you're doing some drive-bys, especially at high speeds, then you will definitely hear the sound coming from that V8 engine, which always sounds pretty, pretty good. Now, even if you go into the sport mode, you're not gonna get the same performance that you would get from a smaller car. So for example, if you drive a three series or a five series, maybe even a smaller car like an X3 M40i, that sport mode, it's definitely a lot more dialed up to give you additional aggressiveness in the car, and especially when you're trying to go fast through some bends. But nonetheless, you do have a wide range of options in the car. You can also go into a very efficient mode, which essentially will reduce the power a little bit, and you will get more mileage out of the car, basically. What I do like about this car, especially at nighttime, it's the fact that it comes with a lot of technology inside that really shines 
at night time if you sit in the car you'll be overwhelmed by all the lights around you you have this interaction bar running across the dashboard of course it goes into the doors as well you also have this roof right there which gets illuminated and that's something that's new in the 7 series and then you can add to all of this the theater screen in the back 31 inch 8k which will take the visual experience to a new level so if you travel at night and you have a driver with you you can definitely go into the back seat maybe activate the executive lounge sit back relax and you can watch some movies or you can even bring your PlayStation in and play some games. So when it comes to technology, this is definitely the most advanced 7 Series BMW has ever made. And at the same time, they're not trying to overwhelm you. So if you look at products like the EQS from Mercedes, maybe looking at the S-Class, even the Audi A8, you will feel like there is so much technology inside, screens everywhere, switches everywhere, a lot of lights, but you're not getting the same thing in a 7 Series. It's more of a balance in between a very classy design, driver-oriented, and at the same time with little touches of luxury here and there, and of course, some technology to make sure that the 7 Series is being brought up to speed with all the latest trends when it comes to infotainment system, and of course, with other features as well. Space-wise, you can definitely travel with five people. There are only three of us traveling uh, during this road trip. And as you'd expect, there is plenty of space, especially in the rear seat. I have my seat pushed back to the normal driving position. And if I were to sit behind me, there is a lot of room. So clearly, if you're on the taller side, you will not have any problems. You can definitely have three adults in the back and you will be quite, quite comfortable over long distances. So once again, this is why BMW offers only one option, the long wheelbase, because the short wheelbase in the previous generation, while it was a lot of fun to drive because it was smaller and less heavy, then they decided that you no, know, the long wheelbase is the way to go because a lot of customers were choosing this one, especially Chinese customers. They're known for loving their long wheelbase cars. This is why in China you can find cars like a 3 Series, a 5 Series and even an X5 being built on a long wheelbase. And that's probably one of the main reasons why they decide to have just one variant globally with a long wheelbase. Another interesting tidbit on the 7 Series is the aero coefficient. It is 0.24, which is extremely impressive because a car of this size with a fairly boxy design it is not always easy to achieve such a good aero drag and i'm thinking that that's probably because of the bmw i7 in that car being all electric you have to maximize efficiency and of course the drag coefficient makes a huge difference you've seen that also in the new bmw i5 so from that perspective the 7 Series has a really low aero drag, the same thing that we've seen also on the Rolls-Royce Spectre, another huge car that you wouldn't expect to be that efficient when it comes to the aerodynamics. All right, so now let's push the car a little bit and see what it can do. I found some really nice bands here in Missouri, and now we can see what this heavy car can actually do. It's a heavy car, you will feel that in the nose immediately. Of course, you have that massive engine at the front, but the car is also quite, quite heavy. Nonetheless, it is quite grippy at the front and that's quite surprising because once again all that mass is being transferred to the front especially under heavy braking and you wouldn't expect to be so precise and so grippy at the front of course it does help that i'm riding on 21 inch wheels high performance wheels and that's going to bring some grippiness to the front end and of course because of the all drive system as well it also has a wider track at the front and in the rear and that's definitely going to help you going in and out of the corners a lot better than you would expect because I would expect this car to maybe understeer a little bit if you were to go fast but if you're modulating the brakes right before the corner and then you enter hard and then you're going to be able to really push the car out of the corner immediately without losing the grip so that's quite quite good. It's also easy to get to top speeds quite, quite fast. So if you're not careful, especially because you're so isolated from the outside, you will get in trouble in no time because if you just floor that gas pedal, the car will just literally take off. Once again, they say zero to 60, 4.1 seconds. I have a feeling it's a little bit quicker than that. Naturally, it is not a car that you will often take on some of the scurvy roads and push it hard. It's not a car that will find its way onto the racetrack. 
but it also shows that if you want to change the character of the car and if you can find the proper roads you will have some fun with this one it is not recommended to do this with somebody in the car because you're probably going to get in car sick it is still a heavy car and that constant braking and taking off uh, you'll probably put a strain on your passengers so be careful if you're going to do that especially if you have kids in the back seat because they might throw up on those really nice seats so is the new bmw 7 series a better product than its competitors that's a tricky question i've only had a chance to drive the s class and i've said it before it's always going to be the benchmark in a segment it's a car that's been refined over time and if i were to compare that car with a similar product from bmw i would say it's the m3 and the m4 those two cars have always been the benchmark for other companies and i feel like this s class it's exactly the same thing in compared to the 7 series and the audi a8 for example so as always it's not easy to pick between the two because it really comes down to your personal preference a lot of the bmw drivers still enjoy the sportiness that comes from a bmw versus what you're getting into a mercedes s class which is all about luxury and opulence and you can see that and you can feel that once you step inside that car so if you're looking for more of a luxury limousine with a flair for sportiness then i would say the 7 series it's the benchmark but then again if you're looking for opulence luxury and being overwhelmed by the interior than the s class it's really a good product what i really want to compare the 7 series with is really the previous generation design wise of course now looking back you would say that the previous generation the g10 g11 was a good product because it was not so much in your face it was a little bit more understated even though the facelift brought in the very large kidney grills but overall it was a more pleasing design it was less controversial for sure so if you look past the design because that's extremely extremely subjective and I've experienced this quite a few times when there is one person that absolutely loves the design of the new 7 series and there is somebody next to that person that absolutely hates it so once again very subjective so let's talk about the improvements when it comes to the driving experience it feels a lot closer to a luxury limousine than ever before so if bmw was trying to cater to a group of people looking for the ultimate luxury machine i say for the ultimate driving machine then the new 7 series has achieved that objective of course technology wise it is by far the most advanced 7 series ever made it might even be the most advanced bmw on sale today and when you go inside you can also see a huge generation gap in between the ip the the whole infotainment system and the whole dashboard setup compared to the g10 and g11 this is really a huge step forward and not only because of the tech but also because of the materials used you can feel i mean i've had a chance to experience the leather in the new 7 series and it's absolutely sublime it feels great it looks great and there are a lot of options to choose from and of course you're getting all this tech integration at the front you can pick the carbon fiber in different trims you can also get wood if you want lots of options there so when it comes to the options list it is almost endless so overall definitely a step forward in terms of design absolutely a step forward when it comes to the driving experience if you're looking for a soft and comfortable car then i would say the new 7 series delivers on that so i always suggest that you take a trip to your local dealership experience the car for yourself of course it's a little bit unfair when we review cars because we're really getting the top spec that's available once again this one has about fifty thousand dollars worth of options including the twelve thousand dollars two-tone paint it has a seven thousand dollar option for the executive lounge and it keeps on going you know you have bowers and wilkins speakers with the theater screen so this is really fully loaded of course you have the driver assistant pro package so maybe not everyone will sprint for a spec like this but if you can highly recommend it there are a lot of features that might be useful to you so once again in conclusion a step forward from the previous generation it is a really refined product a lot better than ever before and i have a feeling that this new 7 series will probably sell a lot better than the previous generation of course you also have the bmw i7 i test drove that in the past 
And once again, if you're looking for an eco-friendly car, for something that takes you into the future and you feel like you want to be environmentally conscious, then you do have the option to get the i7 as well. And it's great that BMW still offers an option like that. Downsides, not too many from my perspective. Of course, I would have preferred to see a different design on the car. I still feel that the Kine grille is a little bit too much. Of course, it does work a little bit better on the 7 Series than any other BMWs because of the size of the car. And if you're getting the M Sport Pro package with the blacked out parts, it kind of blends in a lot better than what you will see on a 7 Series with a chrome surround the grille. Split headlights, of course, controversial. Once again, you've seen it on the new Rolls Royce as well. You've seen it on the X7. It is subjective. Uh, some people love that design and they feel like it's a lot more premium. It also gives the designer a lot more freedom to play with the lights because now the daytime running light at the top, you can actually play with the inner graphics in there and you can see it on this car. They look quite, quite cool with a lot of crystals inside. So because you don't have to worry about the headlamps, which are just positioned underneath that. So I would say from my perspective, maybe the design could have been a little bit better. But once again, it is extremely subjective and it just comes down to a personal preference. Driving wise, of course, it's a lot softer than I usually want. I am not your typical 7 Series customer because I'm always more into smaller and probably nimbler sports cars. But I could see why somebody will enjoy this more soft and plush ride versus the previous generation. But I would say if you're that type of driver that wants some aggressiveness in their luxury limousine, some additional sportiness, then maybe they will feel a bit disappointed by the softer steering, maybe by the softer overall ride. Maybe the last downside is the price because it is a little bit insane that you can go from a base price of $113,000 to $162,000 in this car. Of course, it's optional, you don't have to, but that shows once again that maybe cars today don't come with a lot of standard features like they did in the past and you have to pay for every little upgrade. And sometimes it's tough to just get one upgrade because they're bundled up into a package. So then you end up having to pay for the entire package to maybe enjoy one feature that you really, really want. So with that being said, this is the new BMW 760i with a V8. It is available in the US and not in Europe. If you live in Europe, you have the option in between a six cylinder plug-in hybrid and of course the BMW i7. I have not had a chance to drive that plug-in hybrid yet, but that will be the next on my list to see how it compares to the V8 and if they even come close as far as the driving experience. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.